Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I'm a K-5 STEM teacher and ed tech coach in Los Angeles. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers, and today's video is going to be about Blue Kit. Blue Kit is a fun new twist on your typical review game. It's really great for leveling up student engagement. It's so much fun for students to play and it just brings that fun and energy back into the classroom when you're reviewing concepts. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the teacher perspective. So I'm gonna walk you through how Blue Kit works from the teacher perspective, how you can set it up. And then we're also gonna take a look at the student perspective so you can understand what that interface looks like for students when they're actually playing Blue Kit. So without further ado, let's get started. <music> and as the teacher I'm going to want to actually log in to start using BlueKit. Now in the top right hand corner you'll see there are two choices. We have log in and sign up. If you've never used BlueKit before you're going to want to create an account. So to do that you'll click on the sign up button. If you already have an account you'll want to click on the log in button. Now since I've already created a BlueKit account I'm just going to go ahead and click on the log in button. Now you'll see I am taken to the BlueKit dashboard. This dashboard here is going to be where you create your question set. So you'll see here in the center, it says you'll need a question set to host. I don't have any question sets that I've created yet, which is why I see this here. If you have created question sets, they will be housed on this page here that says my sets. So the first thing I wanna do as a teacher is like I said, I'm going to want to create a question set. Now there are two great options for us to choose from as the teacher. In the middle here, you'll see a button that says create a set, and you'll also see an option that says discover sets. Create a set allows the teacher to create a question set from scratch. So let's say as the teacher, you have a set of review questions that you want your students to be responding to. You would want to create a set so that you can import your own questions. Now, if you're just wanting to discover sets, see what other teachers out there have created, you can click on discover sets to see what already exists. So for the purpose of today's video, I'm not going to be creating a question set, but really I'm gonna be focusing here on this discover sets section because there are so many incredible sets that teachers out there have already created. So I'll click on discover sets and you'll see that I'm taken to a page with tons and tons and tons of different sets that you can choose from. You also have the ability to search for a set. So let's say I am a teacher looking to create a set or looking for a set out there about multiplication. I do have the ability to search for keywords here to find other sets that teachers have created about multiplication. So that's just one example for how you can use that, that search bar here. For the purpose of today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this option here that says name that animal. This is a great way to teach students about, you know, matching vocabulary words to different animals, for example, or it's just a fun game that you can try out to introduce Blue Kit to your students before you use it for a more high stakes activity related to academics. So here it says name that animal. How well do you know your animals? Try to match the picture to the animal's name. Great for everyone who loves pets and all sorts of creatures. Now you'll see on this page, there are all of the different questions. So there's an image and then it asks students to figure out what animal is this. So you'll see tons and tons of questions. Now, if we take a look at one of these questions, for example, where it says, what animal is this? If I click on this drop down menu that says show answers, it tells you four different choices that students can choose from. So we have walrus, a sea cow, otter, and seal. Now on the right hand side here, you'll also see that there is a time limit. So the teacher who created this set gives students 20 seconds to select the correct answer. And you'll also see that there is this random answer order, uh, meaning that the answers will be mixed for every student. So my view when I receive this question might look differently from another student in the class who might have seal first, for example. So that just kind of randomizes the answer order. All right, now that we've taken a look at all the different questions, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it's like to actually host this game to try out with students. So to host this game in your classroom, what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna click on this button here that says host. When I click host, it now gives me the option to select a game mode. Now what's really cool about BlueKit, in my opinion, in comparison to some other review games or apps that are out there, is that there are tons of different game modes that you can choose from. So you can do the same question set with students several different times, but have the interface look completely different. 
So this is a nice way to level up student engagement to get students really excited about all the different games that exist. Um, so for example, let's take a look. In the top left hand corner here, it says new mode tower defense. So the way this game works is it says action packed defensive chaos. Answer questions, build towers, and des design your defense to protect yourself from waves of evil blooks. Now let's take a look at this gold quest one. Exciting twists and chests full of gold. Build your riches in this chaotic mode by answering questions to earn gold and take it from other players. Let's take a look at this cafe one here. It says, order up. It's time for some delicious food. Serve food to customers, restock your supplies by answering questions, and buy upgrades to create an awesome cafe. Now, lastly, I want to point out this racing one. This is the one that we're going to be using for today's video. It says, exhilarating, suspense-filled action. Answer questions to race opponents and use power-ups to get to the finish line first. So I like this game. I think this one feels really fun for students. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here that says host game. Now you'll see that I have a few settings that I need to adjust before I actually try out the game with students. So first it says allow late joining. I have this checked right now. Basically what that means is if a student wants to join the game late, they do have the ability to do that if you have this option checked. Now if you don't want students to be able to join the game late, then you're going to want to uncheck that option. Next, it says use random names. Uh, so for this one, if you don't want students to have their names tied to their players, you would want to check this button so that it's randomized, so that you don't know who is who, so that other students don't know who they're necessarily competing against or who the winner is going to be. Then the last choice here is number of questions. Now, right now, this is automatically on 30 questions, meaning that students are going to be asked 30 different questions during this game. Now that might feel like a lot of questions, so you do have the ability to make it fewer questions, make it more questions. It's kind of up to you as the teacher. I'm gonna go ahead and just go down to 10 for the purpose of today's video, but you do have the ability to add many more questions depending on how many are in the question set. Now that we're ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the host to now button. I'm gonna turn off this sound and it says go to bluekit.com slash play and enter the game ID. So this is basically a direction for students. As the teacher, you're all set up, you're ready to go. You are now going to want to instruct students to go to bluekit.com slash play and have them enter the game ID. This game ID here is what students are going to need to use in order to play your specific Bluekit game here. So now what we are going to do is we're going to take a look at the teacher perspective next to the student perspective. So for the remainder of today's video, I'm going to have the teacher perspective on the left hand side and the student perspective on the right hand side. So you can see the two modes happening at the exact same time. So let's switch into the next part of the video. So again, we're looking at the teacher perspective on the left hand side here and the student perspective on the right hand side. So as the student, I'm going to want to enter the game ID that my teacher gave me. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And when I'm ready, I'll click the arrow button. Now you'll see I'm prompted to enter a nickname. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my name here. And when I'm ready, I'll click the arrow again. Now while I'm waiting for my teacher to start the game, and while my teacher is waiting for other students in the class to join, I'm go going to want to go ahead and select one of these characters here. So I'm going to click on this little pig here. And I've selected my icon, so I'll just wait until my teacher begins the game. So you'll see I've gone ahead and already added some more students to the class just for today's example. I am, as the student, going to be responding as Maddie, but I wanted you to see what the interface looked like with at least a couple of students playing the game. So as the teacher, you'll go ahead and want to start, press the start button once students are all in your class and ready to go. So now looking at the student perspective, it says your goal is to be the first to answer 10 questions correctly. So I'll go ahead and press the OK button. Now you'll notice that there is some fun music that plays while students are playing the game. I'm just going to turn that off for today's video, uh, but there is fun music that can accompany the game. So you'll see I'm at Maddie in the middle on the left hand side. This is the teacher perspective. If you're teaching in your classroom, this is a really fun thing that you can project on the board so students can see themselves racing against each other. Now as the student, it says, what animal is this? So I'll choose an answer. So let's say I want to go ahead and choose hippopotamus. I got that one correct. So I've moved forward and closer to the finish line. 
Now it says, what animal is this? So I can go ahead and click on sloth. And you'll see again, I'm moving closer to the finish line. So as students answer questions and respond, they will move closer and closer to the finish line and the game ends once the first student completes the race. So I'll go ahead and just respond to the remainder of these questions so you can visualize what that looks like. Now I can click on a power up. This one I got says whoosh, so blow a player back behind you, one question. Um, so click anywhere to use this power up. So if I want, I can choose to make Joseph go back a step. So that's kind of fun for leveling up again student engagement where students are competing against each other. Now it says what animal is this, so I can go ahead and click on one. Let's say I get a question incorrect, I choose the octopus. You'll see I don't actually move backwards, but it does tell me what the correct answer is. So it tells you the final standings, it tells you what places everyone came in. I won the game, so it's told me that I have gotten into first place. And so now as a student, I can choose a token multiplier if I would like, so I can go ahead and click on that button. So as the student, after the game is over, it gives you some stats. So you'll see that I came in first place. It tells me my accuracy, so it tells me what percentage of questions I got correct. Uh, so that's some helpful information and feedback that it gives you as the student. Now, if we take a look at the teacher perspective again, it says, would you like to play again right now with the same players and the same settings? If you would like to play again with students, you can press the yes button. I'm going to go ahead and click on no. Now that the game is over as the teacher, I do have the ability to click on the view report button to actually get some stats about how students responded. So what's great about this is it actually tells you the percentage that your whole class, how your whole class did in playing this game. It tells you the leaderboard so you can understand where different students were, how they performed. And so that's some helpful feedback and detailed reports that Blue Kit does give you as the teacher. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use Blue Kit. If you liked it, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers, and I'll see you back here soon. Bye, friends.